always remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Travis Cook, back with you once again. And as a proud and esteemed graduate of the University of Missouri, it is a very rare occasion in which you will ever hear me say anything positive about the state of Kansas. I guess old rivalries die hard. But I must admit that today something happened. I saw something on the news that actually made me stop and say, hey, uh, Kansas, well done. Tip, tip of the cap to you. The Sunflower State did something right today. Uh, today over in Kansas, in the House of Representatives there, House Bill 2453 passed. Now that is a bill that, uh, and I'm, I'm taking this from CNN.com in terms of the description here, in case you want to look this up. This is a bill that explicitly protects religious individuals, groups, and businesses that refuse services to same-sex couples, especially those that uh, claim to be married or are tying the knot or whatever. So that's what the bill is. The idea is, and I'm quoting from CNN here, that they want to prevent religious individuals and organizations from getting sued or otherwise punished for not providing goods or services to gay couples or for not recognizing their marriages or committed relationship as valid, which makes sense because gay marriage is not recognized in Kansas to begin with. So I like that, that law, and it's going to go into the Senate now in Kansas, and then uh, if it passes there, hopefully it will get signed. But the idea of the law is something I really like. However, I would say this, though. There are two... Uh, two pieces of that law that I think could be improved on and where it needs to be expanded a little bit. I, first of all, I, I, I don't like that it's restricted to same-sex couples. Like that's the, the one group of people that you're, you're singling out there. I don't think that's right. I think businesses ought to be able to discriminate against whoever they want or refuse service to whoever they want for whatever reason they want to. Likewise, I do not think that a business should have to prove or should have to claim a religious reason for denying service, although that is a perfectly valid reason and I support it, but I think a business should be able to deny service for whatever reason they want to, religious or whatever else. Now I know that some of you out there, upon hearing me say this, hearing me say that I support such a law, you're screaming that I'm a hater and I'm a bigot and whatever other four letter words you can think of. But before you do that, I want you to think about something. Think about what happens if a business is allowed to refuse service to someone, if a business is allowed to discriminate against someone. What is the natural logical extension, extension of that? What happens next? Well, let's say, let's take the uh, example, I guess I'm in Oregon a few weeks back, of a, a baker that refused, to, uh, refused to, to bake a wedding cake for a gay couple. What would happen had the government not interfered there? Well, in that case, the gay couple would have still wanted a cake. They would have still want, still had their money with which to buy the cake, just that that particular bakery would not have baked it for them. So what, what happens next? Well, it seems to me that the refusal of one company to service that gay couple or whomever else opens up an opportunity for all of the other competing businesses in that field. Hmm, think about that. I mean... I've told you on this show before that I'm against gay marriage, and I, I don't agree with it. However, if I were a baker in Oregon when all of that was going on, I tell you what, I darn sure would have been tempted to offer to bake them a cake and sell it to them. Or heck, forget even selling it to them. I might have said, hey, I'll bake you the cake for free. Just let me put my uh, business cards out there at your wedding, and all your little gay friends can take my business card and say, hey, that's a pretty good cake. When we get married, I'd like them to bake our cake. See, what you're doing there when you allow discrimination is you're also allowing opportunities to pop up for other businesses who do not have such convictions or who, for whatever reason, want to take that piece of market share. It's the natural order of things. It is the free market functioning at its best. Personally, I think that a business ought to be able to discriminate against anybody they want for any reason they want. You want to discriminate against refuse service to same-sex couples, you ought to be able to do it. You want to refuse service based on any number of factors, religion, political affiliation, ethnicity. Hey, if you want to refuse service in your establishment to overweight, balding, white, conservative males, go ahead, refuse service to me. 
I'd rather not spend my money with you. And I'd rather go somewhere else and tell all of my other overweight, bald, fat, white, conservative male friends, and there are several of us, to go spend their money there too. You shouldn't have to pretend that you respect me. I shouldn't have to pretend that I respect you. In fact, I gotta tell you, if I were a business owner in Kansas right now, and let's say that I owned a business that specifically appealed to the gay community, it might be something like a maybe a restaurant or a dance club or a clothing, uh, a clothing sales place or a clothing store, something like that. I mean, there are different businesses that might fit that bill. If I own one of those businesses, I would be begging for this law to go into play because it would make absolutely sure that all of my competition that doesn't want that business would step out of the way and I'd have much more of an advantage. You see, that's the great thing about the free market, the pursuit of profit and greed, is that it overcomes whatever biases and whatever bigotry, if you want to use that term, that people naturally have. Greed is the antidote for bigotry. Now, in closing, some of you I know are jumping up and down and screaming, what about the South? What about segregation? What about Jim Crow? What about the Civil Rights Act? Some of you people cling on to that piece of legislation as though it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Let me set you straight on something. I have always said that all the different Civil Rights Acts in the 1960s were overreach of the federal government. They were bad legislation, mainly because of those clauses that required businesses to give service to everybody and that did not allow them to discriminate, did not allow them to refuse service. Now, does that mean that I personally approve of, let's say, a lunch counter that would not uh, serve black people? No, I don't approve of that. But it's also not my business, especially if it's happening in another state. If people in Alabama want to do that, hey, I live in Missouri, I don't care. I shouldn't care. If you don't like what Kansas is pr proposing to do here and you don't live there, tough titties, you don't count, nor should you. But secondly, it's that business owner who is taking the risk of going into that business, taking the risk of investment, and they are the ones who will have to suffer the consequences or reap the consequences, whether positive or negative, of denying that service. And if, if they do refuse service, what are they doing? They are ceding, voluntarily ceding, a percentage of the marketplace, a percentage of the market share. And that market share is now in play for everybody else that competes with them. You know, I told someone the other day, someone asked me the other day if I had been alive in the 1960s, if I had been a, a legislator back then, if I would have voted for the Civil Rights Act. And I told them, no, I would not have voted for the Civil Rights Act. And it's for that very reason. Businesses should be able to run themselves as they like and take the risks as they like. If they want to take the risk of refusing service and then suffer the consequences of doing so, maybe that business going somewhere else, they ought to be able to. I mean, think about something. If, now I don't, I don't mean to stay on the civil rights thing, but if suddenly today we allowed businesses to discriminate on the basis of race down south, how many businesses do you think would actually do it? I don't think very many would because they'd be losing too much freaking money if they did. You don't need laws for this kind of crap. You don't need laws to prevent discrimination because over time the free market and the natural pursuit of profits and greed will eliminate discrimination for you. It will overcome all the bigotry and biases that you liberals want to bitch about. So good job, Kansas. Let people live their lives as they wish. Let them voluntarily cede market share if they wish to do so and allow other businesses to go in and pick that market share up. It's the best way for all of us as human beings to get along. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time.